back. Welcome to Revolution Rampage, brought to you today by, well, just us for now. Right. <laughs> for now. For now. Um, Soon. Yeah, so today is February 8th, 2020, and the Carolina Hurricanes are still latching on to a playoff spot by their shinny chin chin. Please. Please. I'm interested to see how Vegas goes tonight. Yeah. Oh, oh man. Well, so, yeah, don't they have they Flurry on, tonight? Uh, I don't know if Flurry's back. Last time they took on Malcolm Steuben, the Jeff's giving me <laughs> head nods saying okay. that Jeff, there's Flurry's a mic back. right there. He's got his own microphone. Yes. <laughs> yes. He, he forgot how to use a mic. <laughs> it's okay. You speak into it. Um, I so it was a baby bottle, and I almost uh, sucked out of it. <laughs> yeah, oh my god. Yeah. Uh, let's not do that. Right. Well, we got a lot to talk about today. But first of all, we have a neat little thing that Omar and Amanda did. Right. So a couple of days ago, we joined the Let's Go Blues radio podcast radio station. Anyway, yeah. Those guys were amazing with us. And uh, we talked nice. Joel Edmondson. And we also talked... Je- uh, not Jeff Skinner. Um, well, we Justin did mention Falk. Jeff Skinner. <laughs> we did mention Jeff Skinner. Uh, talking about but pains yeah. have left. So yeah. Justin Falk uh, did go over to the Blues. And from our conversation, it seems like uh, he's the same old Justin Falk. And yeah. He's doing Justin Falk things. Yes. So It's like weird that what he does with his number, though. It, it's weird that he just switched it. I mean... It, Teams switch numbers, all players switch numbers to new teams all the time. I bet money he still Taylor signs Hall. at 27, though. Maybe, yeah, out of habit. I mean, Taylor Hall is now, what, 91 with the Arizona Coyotes uh, yep. when he was just straight up number nine with the Devils. Moving on, mm-hmm. we have a visit. We do, Amanda. We do. We've got the Black Girl Hockey Club coming on Sunday. Woo! Um, our podcast and the Red Eye Rowdies have kind of joined together and we're going to sponsor a big old tailgate starting at one o'clock um, on the East Lawn. We are super excited to get them into town. Uh, I can't wait to see them again. I haven't seen I think it's Renee the East Park Lawn, year. not the East Lawn of the White what? House. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Man, all right. The big po- lawn on the East Parking Lot. How long have <laughs> we tried to get them? It's been a while. It's been a while, it's but happened. she's doing a lot of traveling. So, Oh, no. Know. <laughs> Dang Get it together, Jeff. Jeff. <laughs> hey, it's only his second episode. He's got it's time. Okay. It's okay. It's like my uh, <laughs> kerfuffle with the uh, the live cast the other night. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Always have headphones. <laughs> I'm still gonna watch that. I haven't watched it yet. Yeah, it's, I will. It's pretty bad. And then I As took a tour everyone. of the house. Oh, yeah. don't worry. She was good. I should have just left. The As a person who was sick that day, there. she was fine. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was fun. It was fun once I got it together. But <laughs> seriously, yeah, so it's been so long since we tried to get Black Girl Hockey yeah. Club. I'm so happy they finally yeah, get them. Coming. It's great. And they also have a ticket package they for do. the game. So tell us a little bit more about that, Amanda. Yeah, if you go to their Instagram page, th- I know there's a link um, there. And, and they have certain sections that they're going to be sitting in and uh, discounted tickets. and So that'll be good. Discounts are always good. Yeah. Yeah, and I think yeah. Uh, later today we'll put up uh, the link to that on our Twitter page good, yeah. as well. Basically everything. We want this to go really well. Yeah. Right. And for those of you who are listening and don't have Instagram or oh. Twitter. Yeah, I think it's on her Twitter as um, well. Facebook. Well, Facebook. well, yeah, Facebook's it's also everywhere. another source. <laughs> but say you are completely disconnected from the social media world because you do not need that in your life, that's okay. Uh, RevolutionRampage.Libsyn.com is our website. And in the description for this episode... We'll uh, put a link in for that as well. Yeah. I guess that's my job. <laughs> yes. But don't worry. We have other things to talk about involving buying. Indeed. Speaking of buying, the Revolution Rampage podcast is more than happy to introduce mm. a <laughs> brand new t-shirt. That's Yay. right. You heard us correctly. There's a new t-shirt out here, and it involves... The one, the only, Dougie Hamilton. It's the Doug Hug. It's the Doug Hug. You know, the Valentine's Day coming up. <gasps> if you're mm-hmm. all by yourself, a Doug Hug is always nice. Good plug. I mean, a Doug Hug is <laughs> nice anyway. But. So, Eric, for those of you who <laughs> want to know where to find this t-shirt, Raleigh Hockey Company 
is the point of contact or point of sale. So they have their own website with their store. Um, details will also be found in the link in the description for the episode as well as Twitter, Instagram, and on Facebook. They also um, still have our other shirt with Red Eye Rowdy still, don't they? Right. Mm-hmm. So the Hockey Lives in Raleigh t-shirt's also on that site. Um, what's great about these t-shirts uh, is that they're made right here in North Carolina. So, yeah, sure, it doesn't have that little logo you hear in the commercial, but... Uh, Born, raised, caught, or made. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I'm so glad you, they you put subtitles that. on that because I did not know what he was saying. God, God or made? What? Born, raised, caught, caught or made. Or well, made. I, North Carolina. All right, move on. Is that a southernism? <laughs> yeah, that, that is. Now, so let me just explain the whole Doug Hug thing real fast. So originally, I came up with it because after he makes a goal, he always gives a big hug. And who would not want a hug from Dougie? Even if someone else scores, he's coming in with the hug. (laughs) (laughs) So I came up with Doug Hug. And then I had my birthday and I held the sign. Can I get a Doug Hug? He came over to the glass, gave me one through the glass. That was Whaler's Night. Yeah, it was. was And then literally the next game. So who who would not want a dog hug? So there you go. That is true. Yeah. Again, available for Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day. We did perfect timing with it. Give, give your significant <laughs> yeah, other true. a dog hug. That's right. So, now. Re- so again, in case you've forgotten, Raleigh Hockey Company. So RaleighHockeyCompany.com. Go to the store. You'll find um, the dog hug shirt. We are $35. Mm-hmm. Buy that. Heads up. But... The material is incredible from Raleigh Hog Company. Again, made in Super North Carolina. Comfy. They're really comfy. They don't shrink in the watch. They're really actually amazing. And the um, the stitching and the coloring on it doesn't fade. So they're great t-shirts. They are. And they last really long. And they're great for summer days. To they're great for Canes, Canes game. Yeah, they're great for Canes games. Um, all the Canes events. Uh, and a Doug Hug never gets old. Never. No. And you know what? Maybe if... Uh if it's a good size on me, I might turn it in. I might turn it into a Joel Edmondson uh, crop top too. <laughs> oh <my laughs> the gym or the, you know, summertime is coming. Okay, if somebody could do that for Jeff, please. <laughs> is, that, is that how you're just gonna wear all our shirts now? I just order them a little a size smaller for you. Let's, let's, let's yeah, not. I look pretty good in a crop top. Oh my crop gosh. top and the kilt. Oh boy. <laughs> Why are we giving him ideas? <laughs> <laughs> He'll look like a straight-up cheerleader. <laughs> all, right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Moving Enough on, ideas for on. Jeff. Move on. <laughs> Let's talk more about the Hurricanes and how they've done since the last podcast. They came out of the All-Star Weekend, and they're kind of 50-50 right now. They're 2-2. Two and two. They lost to the biggest Golden Knights, won a shootout versus Vancouver, lost a ugly game at St. Louis and then Ugh. bounced back with a win against Arizona. And tonight, the day of recording this, the 8th of February, they play at Vegas. So I want to address something real quick. Someone on Instagram shot us a question, and the question is pretty straightforward. Since the loss of Dougie Hamilton, does this Carolina Hurricanes team um, feel like it gives a bit more goals? And how are they adapting to the loss of the Doug hug? And it was a good was, question. Yeah, and it was a good question. It was, and it came from Ben Davison. Da- ben Davison. So Ben Davison, thank you for that question. Again, um, every day on uh, recording days, we'll put out questions. Uh, we're we're still working with the voicemail um, that we're trying to have. So um, I'll have a number for that by the end of this episode. Here, I'll pull it up. We'll figure it out. Yeah, uh, but if you want to get your voice on the podcast, you can uh, call the number, leave a voicemail, and uh, get on here. So to answer that question real fast, yes and no. Mine is no. They have not adjusted that well. No, I mean, like, yes, they have been letting in uh, more goals, uh, Not, but this is on the defense, not on the net mining, and I'll explain that in a second. And no, they haven't really adapted well. Uh, to be honest, um, Rod Brindamore hasn't adapted well, and he's putting Trevor Van Reems like on the first pairing with Jacob Slavin. I get what he's trying to do. He's trying to spread out the talent, right? Mm-hmm. You, you do your shut down D's with your not so shut down D's, and hopefully you can get something out of it. But quite honestly, you're just not going to replace Dougie Hamilton Slavin pairing. It's just yeah. not going to happen. I think that's a lot of the problem is they had such good chemistry. I mean, they could they knew exactly where each other was, and now you're trying to 
put somebody in the place and try to get that chemistry with somebody else and it's just not the same. Let's be honest, that pairing was unfair because Dougie Hamilton is a forward playing defense and he is excellent at playing said defense. Yeah, well, and then the, the main you got thing Slavin is that who's you got Slavin who is twice a defender of everyone else. Right. I don't know. Like uh, Jeff brought in the what was it? The power rankings, the it, top two hundred. It was about uh, or I think if I'm correct, it's the uh, top two hundred uh, NHL uh, fantasy uh, players. Um, yeah, and Slavin is at one thirty two. That is disrespectful. He should be top 100. Yeah, but he's but this is fantasy. He's not getting fantasy points. He's not scoring goals. He's not getting assists. He's playing shutdown D. And that should be fantasy points. <laughs> it should be, but fantasy doesn't work that way. Fantasy is all about it's all about offense. At, at most, it's plus minus is the rating you're looking at. So if we're looking at the fantasy aspect of it, Dougie Hamilton, um, I had him on my team uh, from the beginning of the year, and Same. up until he got taken off the uh, due to the injury, he was he got me about. 500 plus fantasy points and that includes both block shots shots taken goals assists etc cetera, etc cetera. so he was a uh, mention on there but it was he had to drop off due to his injury and here's something i'll say about all this so a lot of the fantasy leagues are different so he's he's like jeff's in the fantasy league with points i'm in a fantasy league where it's a uh, best sign of uh, uh, looks like every week is ten, is the equivalent of ten games, and in each quote unquote game is basically uh, one in the stats: goals, assists, um, power play points, penalty minutes, stuff like that, including goalie stats. Or so forwards and, and defensive stats are seven, goalie stats are three. But really, it was more heavily on the offense. So I understand that Slavin was not going to be in a, in a really high in the top two hundred players. Because he is not there to score goals. He's there to prevent goals. Yeah, which is the whole fantasy thing is kind of getting me down today because, unfortunately, Flurry is my starting goalie. So let's go back to the question and, and what's happening with this Carolina defense. Outside of Jacob Slavin, a lot of the defenders are caught, are caught on the wrong side of the puck. And I explain this by saying that these guys are being caught between with the puck between them and the netminder instead of being in between the netminder and the puck. So these guys are basically being held, when, and then the opposing offense is finding themselves scot-free in front of the netminder, and, and if they, all it takes is for them to have the puck. And we've seen this against Arizona. We saw it against St. Louis, where all it takes is for them to shoot, and hey, if they get a rebound, they're putting that in the net yeah, every single time. And one of the main points that people – one of the main people that they point at for this whole situation is Jake Gardner. I'll be honest with you, it's not Jake Gardner. Who is I don't it think then? So either. It, it, it's 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 TVR and it's and it's and it's going to be Edmondson. Unfortunately, um, these guys are, are 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 good at blocking shots, but if that shot gets past them and finds someone else, they're done. So here's my input on it: is there's so much inconsistency, and not only with the goaltending, because we've seen Mrazek start two games in a row, we've seen Reimer start two games in a row, we've seen him switch back and forth from Reimer to Mrazek. Then on top of that, you're switching up the defensive pairings almost game in and game out, and that goes with Gardner. I mean, <clears throat> I mean, how many times has Gardner's uh, partner been switched up this season? Or how many times has Edmondson's uh, partner been switched up this season? You can't build chemistry if you consistently do what they're doing. And again, in the last few games, look how many times they've switched their lineup just all together, either before the game, during the game, or after the game to go into the next game. And uh, it all got worse because that injury, the scary cut that Pesci had against Vancouver, was it? it? It was so scary. I was afraid that he was out of the lineup. And that could have made the whole the situation even worse. It right. was a it was a busted vein due to the strength of the shot. It just barely caught him above the uh, mm. glove and then just below where the elbow pad. Uh, 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 stop right there. That that's giving me nightmares. Okay, he, <laughs> for everyone worried, Brett Pesci's he's fine. fine. Yeah, he is okay. fine. It was just really scary. Yeah, it, it just it just looked scary. Um, but here's 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 the truth about the matter about the defense. If Don Waddell is not willing to either a trade for a defender. Either be Brendan Dillon or Alex Martinez or whomever. I put my money on Dillon on that one. If it's not going to be a trade, then he needs to call up Jake Bean. And if he's not willing to do either, I don't understand why. You, you got to defend Jake Bean 
during the uh, the um, the Cold expansion Cold. draft. Yeah. Either way, just because how long he's been in, in the league um, and, and how many games he's played, and he actually played an NHL game, so he's gotta have to be. Uh, protected when that time comes. Either way, so might as well. And that time's coming very fast. So might as well play him. Either that, or he's hoping Seattle and uh, Ron Francis forget that he drafted Jake Bean. Like I don't oh, think that's yeah. happening. That's so you might as well play him. Out of yeah. all honesty, we haven't really brought anybody up since what October, November. Time I think frame. it was Gibbons. Gibbons was the yeah. last call up, yeah. uh, and, and Gibbons is. He's not going to be on the team next year. Mm-mm. Yeah, but you guys are going to see him tonight, and we'll get to that in a minute. Right. Um, oh. But if he's not going to do that, then the pairing should be thus. Jacob Slavin, Brett Pesci, Gardner, Edmondson, TVR, Flurry. That's it. That, those are your lineups. Let yeah. them build their chemistry. You give, you're, gonna, you're not going to give TVR and Flurry a ton of minutes. You're going to give those minutes to... Brett Pesci and Jacob Slavin, and those two are workhorses who can take those minutes on. Yeah. Well, but admittedly, I mean, Flurry's looked really good the last couple games. Yes, he has. He but has. I mean, he isn't this what bad. practices are for, though, to kind of try this stuff out? Why are you doing this in games? Well, Shouldn't they're not you getting be... a lot of practice. Yeah, that is during true. the All Star break, they're only allowed one practice before the next right. game because they're also technically on their bye week in the CBA. But I mean, just like try the pairs that. out during practice, find what works, and then put that in the game. Why are you switching it up every single game? Right. People could be practice heroes. And it just won't work in the game. And that's maybe what was happening, right? Mm. So these guys are showing off great skill during practice, and they look like they worked good together. And then puck hits ice on game day, and it's just not the truth. Everybody remembers the Allen Iverson rant. We're talking about practice, not a game. We're talking about practice. The difference between a game and practice is massive in every level in professional sports. I could say that I am a beast in practice but if i do nothing in a game i'm not going to get any playing time or i'm going to get sent to the minors it doesn't matter yes you can experiment in practice but if you don't take that experiment into a game and see how it goes it's automatically going to fail so there's a saying out there it's it goes along the lines of practice how you play if you're going to uh, play 100 percent or 110 percent practice like 110 percent. and some of the best advice that i've ever heard one of my friends give a goalie when i was living over in england that uh, was playing at the semi-pro level, who is now currently playing at the uh, pro level over in England, is you have to be the best practice goalie when you're at practice. You're the number one practice goalie, whereas meaning you're going to be the backup for most of the games, but you always have to have that concept thinking, I'm going to go in, I'm going to go in. I, you have to keep it at that level. So practice like you're going to play. Speaking of goalies, a lot of people have been – Back and forth on the Carolina two of Mrazek and Reimer of who should get the more who should get more starts, what's going on with them, why are they so inconsistent? Uh, and honestly, Jeff, you're you're the analytics guy on this whole situation. Uh, wh- what do you see going on? So I've done the last five games uh, pretty much ever since uh, the one a couple games before Dougie got hurt, and then all the way up until the game on thir- uh, Thursday night. So, as for Reimer, it's an actual shocking. He played against L.A., Anaheim, New York Islanders, uh, Vancouver, and Arizona. During those games, he went 4-0-1 to include a shutout. His goals against um, throughout those four games was nine. Saves, 173. Save uh, shots against, let me back up a little bit. Shots against was 173. Saves was 164, and a save percentage overall was 4.732. Now, I went even further and did it. Uh, goals against average per game was 1.8. Shots against per game was 34.6. Saves per game, 32.8. And save percentage per game was a nine point or a point nine four six. Man, where has this been for Reimer? So James Reimer, and, and, and this might come as a surprise for a lot of people, but... In the stat of saves above expected or above uh, expected average, so basically, saves depending against on the, average. No saves uh, saves above expected. Okay. So which is basically um, depending on the quality of the shot and ha- and their and his chance to save it. This is a this is a percentage of if he's saving more shots than than um, the quality of the shots expected to be saved or less. 
Mrazek sits a little bit under, but even then, James Reimer is sixth in the league amongst all goaltenders when it comes to saves again, uh, saves above expected, uh, and that makes the pairing, the two of them, tenth in the league amongst all tandems in in the uh, NHL. And wow. The question becomes, so why? Why are they also not doing so well in goals allowed? And that becomes because the defense is allowing a lot of these shots to come from the slot. And the slot is where the most quality shots are going to come from. It's where the most dangerous shots are going to come from. And too often than not, this defense has allowed uh, opponents to sit in the slot unchecked with the puck. So <clears throat> next, I even went and dug a little bit deeper. I watched every shot or every goal that was scored against them during those five games. Man, where do you have the time for this? <laughs> I I go to the gym a lot, and I'm able to sit there and do cardio and get all my numbers, or I'll sit and relax in one of the massage chairs. He, he's single and childless. Though. Yes. <laughs> he multitask. Yes. <laughs> Moving on. So I broke it down to glove side goals against, blocker side goals against, and uh, five-hole goals. So as for Reimer, he had, he had five goals against his glove side. One of them was a rebound. Blocker side... He had three goals scored against him, and both of those blocker sides were rebound goals, and then one of them was an overtime goal. And then he only had one five-hole uh, goal scored against him. Now, when it comes to Mrazek, the story is completely different. And he he played against really strong teams, which, granted, we're going to play him against really strong teams because that's one of our go-to guys for the uh, strong ones. But he went 1-4-0 and oh against Washington, Columbus, Winnipeg, Vegas, and St. Louis. With the one being Winnipeg, of course. Yeah. Yes. But even then, he's let in more than a few, and it's the <laughs> Carolina offense that's kind of got him that win. Well, we got to really define a few. <laughs> <laughs> Three? Uh, something like that. The main thing is, it seems like the situation last year where – there were bits and pieces of the season where Mrazek had a complete different defense in front of them than when McElhaney was in goal. It seems like it's the exact same situation. Well, let's look at the numbers for Mrazek in those four games. And this is really going to shock a lot of people. His goals against were 16. His shots against were only 128. More goals on less shots. Thank you. good. His saves, 112. Save percentage was 4.63 out of those five games. Now, But I'll bet you if you look at the quality of shots against Mrazek, uh, it's going to be a lot higher than against Reimer. We'll get to that. Okay. Which is <laughs> So, goals against average per game were 3.2. Shots against uh, per game were 25.6. Saves per game, 22.4. Save percentage per game was .928. Now, a lot of those goals against him were direct shots where he should have had them. Only two of them were rebounds. So he had seven goals go in on his glove side. Only one of those was rebounds. And I've always seen that James Reimers has a stronger glove side and a stronger glove altogether than Peter Morazic. James Reimer seems to have the glove there, and he's incredible with it compared to uh, Peter Mrazek. I've seen a little bit of both. I've seen Reimer on some really soft goals scored against him on his glove side. There, I know there was one game where you're looking at Reimer like, did he leave his glove at home? And it was really hard to watch it, especially watching the replay. And then for Mrazek, his blocker side, he had six scored against him, only one rebound. And then three... Three on his five hole. And I know at the beginning of the season, I'm not sure who I was hanging out with, but I said every time they went to do the shootouts uh, during training, his five hole was weak. And he needs to close up either that or he needs to keep the stick down on the ice. If he's going to be opening up his legs, the stick either needs to go down or, his, uh, or the paddle needs to stay up. And what's funny is that neither goalie has lost a shootout. Exactly. We need to get a more shootouts. <laughs> No, well, we don't want more no, overtime. We don't really well, well, here's here's what I'm going with My that. Heart can't here, take here's that. what I'm going with that. Even if we lose a game, 
at least get a point. That's where I'm going. At least get a point. Because at this point, l- looking at the standings right now, we're six points out of first place in the division. If things go the way we want, the Canes get better, or they consistently get points instead of just straight out losing, we could see ourselves second, third, even first if if we're being optimistic there. But right now we're currently sitting fifth in division and in the second wild card spot behind the Islanders who have 57 points. Third place in the division, the Columbus Blue Jackets are at 69. Wait, wait, hold on, slow down. How many points did you say we were behind first? We are six points. We're 12. Are, are you talking about the... Oh, sorry, Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh, we're behind six. Yeah. There we go. My fault. Washington is way ahead, but second place. The Pittsburgh Penguins, six points. How good could that be to get to that spot? And we still have to play the Penguins four times in the right, month so of the March. And Boston. Don't forget about Boston. Well, oh, God. <laughs> We got two games left against Boston, but uh, in in quite honestly, those four games against the Carolina Hurricanes in March are critical. And and I've and I said this and the two against the Islanders. And I said this uh, during our time uh, guesting on Let's Go Blues Radio. Mm-hmm. The Carolina Hurricanes are one of the most lethal teams in the month of March. Now, mm-hmm. more often than not. The Carolina Hurricanes are nowhere near a playoff spot, and they surge in the month of March for no reason. And it just makes their draft pick worse. However, last season saw them surge into the month of March and get into a playoff spot. This this season, if they can hold on to what they've got until the end of February and surge into the month of March, they can move out of a wild card spot and into one of the automatic spots, either it to be second or third, but they can do it. And this team has that ability, especially coach under coach under Rod Brandmore. They get for some reason they get warmer in the month of March. Guys like uh, Jordan Stahl, guys mm-hmm. like Jacob Slavin, they just go on streaks. And it's unexplained. Two years ago, three years ago, they went on a 13-game point streak for the whole month of March. Mm-hmm. And, of course, that took them nowhere because they just dropped the last two games of April and they were out of a playoff spot. By I believe that was points. with the goalie tandem of Ward and Eddie Lack. Yes, that was. Mm-hmm. So that was almost, like, what, what, four years ago then? Three or four years ago. Yeah. Because Eddie was going super great, and then he got ran into, I believe, in a game against the Red Wings. Yeah, it was a, it was a yeah, scary was, hit there. Yeah, but I agree. This whole thing during March is absolutely amazing, and if that happens, I could see us being second place in the division. But let's say we went even went two of those games against Pittsburgh. We still have a game against Columbus, a game against Philly, and two games against the Islanders. Right. We win over half of those games. We're guaranteed in the playoffs. Look, look this. It's, I'm going to say this now. March is the most important month in mm-hmm. this season's run hockey. Yes, but there is one day that I believe could make or break us, and that is February 24th, the trade deadline. Uh, if we could just make one happen. trade, one trade to either help our forwards or maybe pick up a better defenseman. That could make or so break here's, us. So here's, here's what Waddell is thinking. Don Waddell is not going to mortgage a future to get a player today. No. And there's a lot of guys. And here's another thing about this market right now. There are way too many teams who think they can get in. There's only nine teams in this league right now. Ten, if you're being generous, mm. that think they have no choice, the no chance and should sell in order to rebuild. That is only 10 teams and another 21 looking to improve their chances. And maybe of those 21, two or three are thinking they're not going to buy. Maybe four or another two who don't have anything to buy with. Yeah. And I'm looking at you, Columbus. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so if you do the math, you're still looking at 15 teams looking to buy from 10 other teams, and it, it's going to be a seller's market. And that means people are going to ask for stuff. And right now, I mean, look at Toronto. They paid two uh, two draft picks and a, and a young player that has a good ceiling to get two rentals. Very yeah. true. But we also got to remember this. Let's cheer for the Maple Leafs. Please be they be good so we can get their draft pick. What? 
Remember, if they finish above like twelfth, we get their first round draft pick. If they finish above tenth, either way, if they so, just if they make the playoffs, it, so, we get their draft so, pick. So no, no, we if, no, they can miss the playoffs and we'll still get the draft pick. It's, mm. it's only one it's through lottery ten. lottery system. I'm not going to no, trust it. It's only it. one through ten protected, and 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 with teams as terrible as Detroit and Se- in Ottawa, it's the not lottery gonna, system. I'm not going to trust win, it. They're not going to win the lottery, even if they do get the top ten. They will just then we'll just wait for them to fall apart again next year and and pick up that draft pick. I mean, I really don't think there's going to be a lot going on at the at the uh, at the deadline because we've got some great players in the AHL. Uh, we're pretty. But Don Waddell is again. He's a lot of these players. He's trying to protect them from playing the twenty-five game limit that puts them in the need to get protected during the the uh, Seattle expansion draft. True. And he's playing forty chess, and we're not looking at all the pieces. There's a lot of things going on, and I really am upset about this uh, draft expansion or expansion draft because it really is putting a hole on a lot of these kids' progression. Yeah, with the yeah. Seattle Kraken. What what kind of name is that? I like it. Hey, the Crack House? <laughs> I don't know, but I think it'd be really funny if they drafted a Scottish player named Phil, and you could call him Phil McCracken. Phil McCracken. <laughs> oh, my God. Dude, where Put are you bum. going? <laughs> all right, all right. Let's, let's move on. Let's move yeah, on. We need, let's, let's we go, need to go to down. The minor, okay, speaking of the kids down in the minor league, let's, yeah. let's see how they're doing. Where you, Jeff, and Amanda are going nope. today. No, nope, just me. me and Jeff. Just you and Jeff? Yeah. All right, just you and Jeff are going down I to wish. the land of Charlotte. All right, so you got a lot of amazing things happening down there. Sure, they started their season kind of rough, but now Jillian Gauthier is on a monster streak. Not only that, Ned has returned to form where he, I think he's lost maybe two games in his last eight starts or something like that. And the team overall is just better. They're currently sitting fifth in their division. They're only two points out of third place. Right. And they, and they were dead points. last and they in no- get those two December. Points tonight. Yeah, they're playing Hartford, who are actually the division leaders at 63 points. So they're eight points out of first place. Yeah, we never really liked them Hartford folks anyways. So what you're saying is is I really should have brought my uh, New York Rangers jersey tonight, right? No. <laughs> um, but there's two people that – there's a, a group of guys that I really want to give credit for this resurgence, and that's the coaching staff. R- Ryan Warofsky, Pat Dwyer, that bench stuck with these guys all the way through their troubles in December, November, all that, and they are showing it now. They're showing how good of coaches they are. They are, and and so right now Charlotte's finally picking up their pace, and they're uh, so we're gonna see a lot of them tonight. See how they're doing. They're getting a really good chance to kind of move up the standings here a bit. Speaking of teams that have moved up the standings, oh boy, <laughs> let's talk about you know what? Let's put that on hold. How? Oh are, no! Let's move down to the ECHL. How are the uh, the Swamp, Swamp Rabbits. Rabbits doing? Uh. Our uh, one of our friend, one of our friends and writers for Cardiac Kane was at uh, the game the other day. It, it was a slaughter. Yeah, the Swamp Rabbits aren't doing that great. What, what was it against the uh, Florida Everblades, our former team? It was what six to two, six to one. We're it was not, bad. We're not, not going to talk about that. Well, it, it's well he's going to talk about it all day. He'll oh, throw yeah. it in our face because oh, he's yeah. a season ticket member for the Everblades. He was so mad when the Hurricanes lost them. So, yeah, I mean, I understand why they moved over to the Swamp Rabbits. It makes a lot more sense logistically and kind of building that Carolina name in, in kind of presence. Yeah, it's just that right now they're, they're doing great in attendance. They're getting, a, of course, yeah, they're getting about 70 percent capacity every game. At the least. problem is they're just not performing right now. And it's been a history with it, the Swamp it, Rabbits it, is they don't really perform because of the instability of the ECHL. Right. ECHL is a, is a beast of its own. And you're talking about players who can go up from there to the NHL or vice versa, or players who just, they play to play. And you know, it's a bus. It's, it's not really a bus league, but it's kind of at that level. But speaking of bus leagues. Oh yeah. Where they actually get most of their players from. <laughs> right. So where does the ECHL can get a lot of their players from? That is right. The SPHL, the Southern Professional Hockey League, where the Fayetteville Marksmen are number one. Yeah, that's right. They took first place in the league. Now they're, they have a two point lead. They play tonight as well. I believe it's they're they're celebrating the 40th anniversary of the Miracle on Ice tonight with special jerseys. They're they're amazing. They're they're it's, yeah. a, you know, it, it's the same 
America on Ice USA jersey, instead of spelling USA, it spells F-A-Y for Fayetteville, but they look incredible. I want it. Yeah, their it, marketing team is, is really good Chuck with their did, promo nights and stuff. Chuck Norris, if you're listening, I want that jersey. Okay, Chuck Norris, <laughs> is, we're, we're talking. He's awesome. Yeah, he's the owner of the Fayetteville Marksman, but it's not the same Chuck Norris that you're thinking. Right. <laughs> he's not roundhouse king players. Well, even though the they put him on the Jumbotron yeah, every time Chuck they Norris score. Well, yeah, I mean, Chuck Norris approves. <laughs> yeah. I think he's I, such a great guy, too. I think I have an offer for Chuck if he's really up for it. What? A pair of 1980 Miracle on Ice blade shades for a Fayetteville Miracle on Ice jersey. I think it'd be a fair trade, out of all honesty. <laughs> <laughs> hey, know, they do like look like good. I have those blade shades, too. They balance. really look a good. jersey for s- plastic sunglasses. <laughs> um, <laughs> that look like hockey sticks? Well, what, yeah. if, what if for two blade shades he got the SpongeBob jersey that's coming Whoa. up later this month? Nice. That SpongeBob jersey looks great. I mean, they've got a lot of good jerseys this year, but that's something you could do at the SBHL level. You can, and, and even at the ECHL level, you they have can a promotion go, where you could win every jersey every that they had this year in a raffle. Right. You can just yeah, basically you can go and have complete nonsense jerseys on the ice because I'm not. I don't want to say there's no rules, but the rules are flexible right. enough to allow for that. <laughs> Imagine if there were no rules. Oh my god! I mean, goodness. it feels like. I mean, the SBHL yeah, where you go does. get some nitty gritty <laughs> hockey. You're talking about some of the. I mean, it's it's the same reason you go watch minor league baseball. It's it's you know you you're going to see guys try to be the best they can be, and sometimes that involves a little bit of roughhousing. Well, look at. Look at what the Fayetteville Marksmen have actually done on the ice this year. Where not only have they upgraded the ice with a whole new ice system, they got brand new boards this year as well. So they upgraded their facility massively, and they're showing it on the ice. They are nine and zero oh and three, nine zero oh and three in the twenty twenty year. How good is that? They have not lost in regulation this year. <laughs> But, and they've won nine of their last ten. And fans are showing up for these games. It actually is a really cool atmosphere in this building. The Crown yeah. Coliseum. Yeah, the Crown Coliseum has... Uh, so the Crown Coliseum is kind of consolidated. They're actually closing some of their out, uh, external buildings in order to consolidate their efforts in the main arena. So they're putting a lot more funding into that. So it's actually been improved. So if you are in the Fayetteville area... And even for those who are outside of the Fayetteville area and want to catch some great minor league hockey for, you're, you're talking about not a lot of money. It's like yeah. it's like twenty bucks maybe for like center ice. It's, it's not like, no, it's that's, an, and that's on the glass. Yeah. yeah, and it's an easy hour ride from here. Right. Yeah, from Raleigh, not it's an deal. easy hour from like Winston Salem. Still a three hour drive. It's still worth it. <laughs> yeah, and it, even if even if you just live down in in the Fayetteville area or Stanford or Lumberton or any of those little areas around it. Go check out the Marksmen. Yeah. They're incredible for minor league hockey. There's a lot of action every single night. Plenty of goals to enjoy. And quite honestly, some of the most entertaining hockey you can go watch for the price of a sandwich. Funny you mentioned Lumberton, where I was born. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. What uh, a the fun road pl- again. What a fun place. <laughs> yeah, Everybody you know. You, you, yeah, well, road. you're talking We're about the like... road. Talking about the road. Let's head down the road to Winston-Salem, where the Carolina Thunderbirds are still awesome they're still winning but they had a bit of news come out of there today that doesn't concern me so much dun, dun. it doesn't concern me so much but it's still intriguing with all sorts of like <laughs> we, do. we don't need we a soundboard do. that's what you're for <laughs> <laughs> um the carolina thunderbirds lost their gm today uh jimmy mcmillican i believe i'm saying that right uh he resigned why uh, according to a statement that he put on Facebook, it is to go spend time with his family and his son. Yeah, that's where, respectful. Where's that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, he's from the north. It didn't say exactly where because people are like that. They don't like saying where they live, but he's from up north. Was the, was the last like name like, like that? Minnesota or Wisconsin? Something like that. I so would you, assume it's Minis- uh, Wisconsin with a name like that. So you're saying his Wisconsin came up and said he had uh, to go home? You were waiting on that uh, one, weren't oh, you? Yeah. <laughs> you were, oh, my God. <laughs> you were building that one up. <laughs> well, we wish him luck. We wish him luck in all of his future stuff. Hopefully he comes back to the Thunderbirds in the future. He's a great guy. I've met him before. Uh, best of luck to him. But the Thunderbirds got to move on. They have to keep going. They're first in their division. They're first in their league. Rushing rushing into possibly getting a second streak FPHL championship. They got to move on back to back, 
back, too <laughs> bad. Yeah, go go out to their games. But the bigger problem with Thunderbirds games getting tickets is there aren't many left. Because right. people are just going. <laughs> yeah, Thunderbirds are doing really well in their attendance. It's a really another really fun environment. It's a winning another winning environment. A There's lot, a of, lot of winning in Carolina these oh, well, days. Uh, st- speaking of the Thunderbirds, did you guys see that brawl that they had? Yes, where it involved everyone. <laughs> uh, pretty much this this guy. He was on the visiting team. It was like what two seconds left. I heard it was a real slapper from that side. Yeah, he he literally won the face off and then slapped the shot into the Carolina Thunderbirds bench, and pretty much the entire bench went after him. I mean, I would too. I mean, come on, and the fans are right there. If he missed that shot by like a few inches, that's hitting a fan. Why would you even do that? I've wanted to fight people on ice uh, for lesser than that. <laughs> oh my God. I want to see video of Jeff in a fight on ice. Come on. I want to see Go it. Lee Jeff, fight. Jeff, I know Go you have Lee footage. Fight. I Speaking know you have footage. I, I've never gotten Speaking into a fight. Fights, and have you guys yes. seen the, the battle of Alberta? There's with, nothing better than a goalie fight. Oh Cam Talbot <laughs> and Mike Smith. Dude, the, funny, going at it, the funny thing is they were on the exact opposite teams last year. I know. It's great. I mean, this is yeah. this is rivalry where you want it. This is the, the Battle of Alberta you've been waiting for for 40 years. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Everybody was fighting. It wasn't that great of a game either, but the, it was I a mean, great the, fight. The Oilers blew them out of the, the barn 8-3. Great fight, but boring game. <laughs> there were and, a lot of goals. And what's funny is that I, I would have felt better about the Oilers bro- you know, blowing them out like that if Bill Peters was still their coach, but he's not, and I don't really have any animosity against the new guy. <laughs> Right now. For now. But, <laughs> For now. hey, you, you know, every time I see something like that. We still know, hold a grudge against Lindholm. Yeah, yeah, but he's not doing so great this season. Yeah, last season he went off on a rant, and then now he's invisible. No, Hannafin is getting blown out. Left Derek Ryan. Right. Oh, he's still there? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> still oh, is he? I thought he's invisible. Yeah, they're all invisible at this point. You don't yeah. hear anything out of that team outside of Johnny Gaudreau. All right. All right. Maybe, all right. Let's head back south of the shook. border. All right. Uh, <laughs> uh, fact, we got college. Yeah, let's hit some college hockey. Yep, uh, there's a big thing going on uh, this weekend. Well, not not this weekend of the recording. Next weekend. Well, yes, ECU. We'll get to that. Okay. Um, first of all, the Mason, ACHL. Mason, 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 Mason. Stop it. <laughs> no, we're not going there. Um, Parker. Stop it. Stop it. We're not doing that What's one either. Happening? If you don't know, there's an inside joke between me and Jeff. When we went to the last UNC NC State game, there were these college kids behind us cheering for this one guy whose name is Parker, and they literally did it for the entire game. Oh, wow. That sounds amazing. Oh, it wasn't just cheering. It was like... It was screaming. Screeching and... Well, it was like the lady at the marksman oh, game for us at the beginning of the season. Not the howler. <laughs> yeah. It was like uh. that. We turned it into a joke. But uh, the ACG, ACCHL tournament is running from February 14th to the 16th. NC State has already made it. They're going for back-to-back championships. Wake Forest, the host team, has qualified as well. Now, there is eight teams in the tournament. So far, there's only two from North Carolina that have qualified. Both UNC and UNC Charlotte are fighting for the last two spots. And there's a lot of teams that want that spot. Hey, college hockey is getting crazy, y'all. Yeah, it is. And we're cheering for all of them because we support North Carolina college hockey. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But uh, not only that, we have our friends over at ECU. Their club team are doing a fundraiser to try try to go on some playoff trips, which is a big deal for ECU hockey. I mean, when was the last time you heard ECU even had a hockey team? Uh, last year when I went to play at a hockey tournament for... Uh... Okay, you who travels and plays hockey, you stop it. <laughs> For us in this area, there's not many people that know about it. But uh, they're we, blowing we, up on social media. Oh, yeah. We even yeah. put it on our Facebook page. Uh, they're doing our fundraiser. Go help them out if you can. If not, just spread the word around. We're probably going to do this again when NC State and them ask, are going to look for funds because we support all of them. Okay. So before we move on, do you have something for college? Uh, not for college. I was going to go back to NHL real quick. Yeah. Let me, let me <clears throat> go back. To, we're going to head back to NHL just real quick because we've got another question on Instagram from another fan. Yay. So this is coming from Ted Storm on Instagram, also known as Ted Rashik. And he asks, do you think the Hurricanes can still make the playoffs with Mrazic or Reimer? Or should the Canes try to do a 
to try a one goalie. I guess he's trying to say uh, trade well, a goalie at the trade deadline. <laughs> no. no, no trades. No, no. Uh, so I got tasked draft. to do this uh, real quick, but um, I sent out a uh, uh, tol- or a poll the other night uh, to find out out of the top eight goalies that are out there for uh, unrestricted free agents, and the two shockers that came back as the most populated was Markstrom and Leonard. Hmm. If we were to go after a goalie. Uh, okay, I'm not problem, sure how I feel about Markstrom. Yeah, I'm not sure. Like Markstrom, I don't know if he's really an upgrade over Mrazic or Reimer, really, to be mm-hmm. honest. And same thing with Robin Leonard, because, I mean, now here's here's the one thing I would say about trading a, a goalie for a goalie, right? Say we trade Mrazic for Leonard, right? And then we let Leonard walk in the offseason. Get realized, mm. both Reimer and Mrazic are signed for another season. And Ned is on a one-way deal next season. I don't, means he's coming up I don't one like way or another next season. That's so we're, next season, we're going to be dealing with a three-headed monster, and then someone's going to have to be placed on waivers. Yeah. And just speaking of a three-headed monster, look at uh, look at New York Rangers right now having the, a three-headed oh, monster. It's no. not working. It no. doesn't work. It never worked. It didn't work for us. Mm. Well, isn't Lundqvist on the last year of his contract, too? He has a uh, no-trade co- uh, contract. But I'm saying this is his last year, yeah, so I mean, yeah, for yeah. Next they got a decision to make. Yeah. Just like we have a decision to make. And for right now, the decision, I believe, is don't trade anybody. No. So so that's so until at least the off season. So maybe on the off season. But here's the thing though. It it, it does solve a question now if they do that and they let Leonard walk. But here's the thing, Chicago is not trading Leonard. They think they can make the playoffs now. Well, they're also thinking they're gonna resign him and at this point they're gonna turn into the New York Islanders and not. I d I don't honestly see I don't sorry, not see I don't honestly know what they're gonna do. But right now I'm just saying they might not be willing to actually trade, even if even if we wanted, Chicago won't make the playoffs. Uh, dude, I don't know who's going to make the playoffs at this it, point. They, the Western I, Conference yeah, is a mess. Say, but the Western Conference is a mess. I mean, yeah, he's right. Yeah. How many teams have a chance? All right, like let's, fifteen. Uh, <laughs> let's move on. We're we're kind of mm. running out of time yeah, here. Yeah, but we got so a lot of women's hockey to talk. We about. We do have a lot of women's hockey to talk about, and our resident expert on women's hockey, Amanda. <laughs> Let us know what's going on. Wow, well, what an it intro. is. I know. It's very impressive. It is All Star Weekend. Woo! Woo! In WA. I really need to get some more noise things here. Right? I know. <laughs> we don't need it. We can do our own sound effects. <laughs> it, it's terrible. Yeah, this time last year, uh, we are on our way to Nashville to see the. the so, where are they holding it this year? It is in Boston this mm. year. It's in Boston? It's in Boston. Hey, smiley pants with me. Do they need any beans? <laughs> I doubt it. So what's the difference between this year and last year? Are they are they doing that dual? Are they doing a dual set game? Are are they actually putting it on Twitter? Like what's it's going to be on? It's going to be live on Twitch. Um, even better. Platform. Even better. Um, the skills competition takes place tonight at eight, and uh, tomorrow at nine two thirty p.m. is the the actual game itself. Uh, we had a blast last year. It was so much fun. These women are extremely talented. Um, they've got two teams, uh, Team Packer, uh, Madison Packer from the uh, Metropolitan Riddlers, Riveters. and uh, Metropolitan Riddlers. <laughs> Riddlers. <laughs> well, that would make sense since they say New York City is basically Gotham. Right. So, And then we've got Jillian Dempsey um, from the Boston Pride. Both of those names are huge in NWHL. Um, they're really well-known women and extremely talented. And it should be a lot of fun. Um, the PWHPA has a showcase coming up in Ontario. In Oaksville. In Oaksville. And that will be on the February 22nd. They also have one in the States, in Philly. Yeah, they're doing the one in, in Philadelphia coming up here soon at the end of um, February. Uh, the weekend, February 28th through the 1st. So here's my question for you, Amanda. Now that... The women were part of the NHL's All Star Game with the USA versus Canada. We got okay, maybe it's two questions, right? This is uh, <laughs> question one point A. Are more people going to tune in to the All Star Game because of that? Because they put on the, an amazing show, and for a lot of people, that was their favorite part of the skills competition day, mm-hmm. even though it wasn't truly a skills competition. So the three on three uh, style, and then two is. Are they doing skills competitions at the, uh, the women's competition similar? Are they following any of the similar NHL-style competitions? 
Yeah, I mean, I remember last year they had, you know, they had Hardest Shot, they had Fastest Skater, um, Accuracy. Are they using that weird digital no, thing? No, they used paper. They used paper. I like that better. I like that better. I do too. I really <laughs> didn't like the whole digital thing. But, well, Slayton you know, still won, so we'll like it. <laughs> and, the, and the answer to that question is, I'm not sure. Because during the NHL All-Star Weekend, they never mentioned the NWHL. So if see, people don't know, all they know is Canada and U.S. Right. They didn't even mention the fact that there was an NWHL. And none of those, none of those players who showed up for the, uh, for the NHL All-Star Game are NWHL players, correct? No, there were. There were. There were. Okay, so I'm wrong on this. Yeah, so and, and somebody okay. had mentioned, why didn't they wear their jerseys? Right. Well, because they're not affiliated. Right. So, you yeah. know, that would have been a conflict of and interest. And what's even, what's even they worse... Need, they, need to, they need to get their legal yeah. heads oh. out of their legal rear ends and figure yeah. out how to work together because it's getting ridiculous, it, really, it is. Yeah. between these two organizations, the NWHL and the NHL. And honestly, they can both benefit and they're all... It, it, both are worried about who benefits more and it's ridiculous. Just... Just do it, support each other out, Yeah. show up, Hell, ha- have, you know, if there's NHL players who are on LITR, they can't, sh- no, have them go out and support the, sure. uh, yeah. the women's all-star there's game. Opportunities there. And now that people can see how much talent there is, maybe it'll bring some more attention. Well, the thing that I really hate about the timing of all this for uh, the NWHL especially is tonight they're having a... They're going to have a ratings war, basically, because uh, the rivalry series is tonight as well. U.S. versus Canada Mm -hmm. is at the Honda Center in Anaheim, and they start at 10. Yeah. It's going to be a ratings war between those two, and unfortunately, the way things are, I think it's going to be U.S. versus Canada is probably going to get the bulk of it. Well, tonight is just skills competition, so it might not be as bad as if it had been. Oh, tomorrow would be a whole lot better, but still. So here's my final question for the all-star game and i'm pretty sure there's a lot of listeners who have this question what format are they playing the actual all-star game in is it three on three please tell me it's three on three i believe it's four on four. Oh, that might be better that's I new four on four so i mean there's there's, there's the old medicine. overtime yeah four on four okay. uh two 25 minute periods interesting so, okay two 25 minutes are they gonna have a halftime show no. <laughs> you mean oh J-Lo and Shakira aren't going to come out? But you know what? They might have and some... upset all the middle-aged um, women in America? Dude, you're in Boston. They'll probably bring up... Uh, kick it up to Boston. They might have some Girls League stuff out there during the halftime. I think they did that last mm-hmm. year. No F-bombs by Green Day? Oh, my no, God. No, no, no dropkick F-bombs. Murphys? No. Stop Mm-mm. it. Stop it right now. <laughs> <laughs> no no flogging Molly? I would actually like to see that one. <laughs> my <laughs> personal opinion. All right, uh, we do got one more thing on the agenda for women's hockey, and that involves one of our personal favorite women's hockey players, Alyssa Golardi, yes. as the official women's hockey. Well, well, oh, crap! What was her title? Women's and girls hockey uh, specialist, development specialist, Develop? something like she's, that. She, okay, first of all, she's the only one. I think only one in the league with that title right now. Yeah. Because yeah. they have a youth hockey director. Right. They have a youth hockey director. But they director. don't have one specifically for women. And yeah, girls. and the Carolina Hurricanes are incredible about being the pioneers in a lot of these aspects. Well, speaking of pioneering, uh, Alyssa is officially hosting a Canes parent daughter camp at PNC Arena on the 17th. It is sold out. It is sold it out. It is completely sold out. How awesome is that? It's that you great. could have this sort of arrangement. With women's hockey in this league, yeah, it, it's great. Um, uh, Rayla and I are going, to, so it should be a lot of fun. <laughs> Rayla's cheering right now. Oh my gosh, Rayla! Um, we've been really looking forward to it. I love working with Alyssa, and now that Omar has helped me with my stopping, I might not <laughs> be quite as embarrassed. Yeah, we all went ice skating the other day, and Omar was going. Omar and Jeff were doing circles around me, Amanda. Yeah. I'm I'm sorry. We got work to do. And you know, l- let me just say real quick. I really appreciate the guys it, that you guys all showed up. Um, it was my daughter's bat mitzvah, and and everybody showed up and from our pod, and and I really appreciate that. That shows just how close we are. Hockey we're, fam, we're hockey fam. Absolutely. And you, everyone's invited to be part of our hockey fam by listening to us and subscribing and buying the merch. Right. So. Follow us on Twitter. 
Follow us on Instagram. Follow us on Facebook. Subscribe to us on YouTube. There may or may not be some more fun things coming out on YouTube. Maybe. Not going to spoil the surprises. However, comma, make sure you do go out and follow us wherever we are. Um, subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, Google Play, uh, Stitcher, Spotify, Spotify, all those things. Um Keep a lookout coming up for the Black Girls Hockey Club link in the descriptions. And the game will be on the 16th. I'm not really certain if we mentioned this before. but Against Edmonton. It'll be the 16th against Edmonton. So mm-hmm. against McDavid and the Oilers, <laughs> we will be presenting Black Girl Hockey Club. What happened last PNC time? PNC Arena. What happened last time when we played them? Zach Cassian got in the fight. And we won. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> and, and Dougie did the whole scoreboard. Uh, yeah. Speaking of one Douglas Hamilton, make sure you check out Raleigh Hockey Company and buy the t-shirts buy for it. the Doug Hug. <laughs> wow, look at you. Are you trying to be a boxing announcer now? <laughs> yes, you know, Minter, I am coming for your job. <laughs> no. Hey, that was my thing. <laughs> you can always spot a little bit to wrap yourself up in a nice warm... Redhead, uh, ginger, uh, uh, excuse me, Dougie hug. Oh, <laughs> I was like, where are you going with this, Jeff? <laughs> oh my God, we're I trying to not hey, get d- the d- 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 Leave that for Kings After Dark. <laughs> oh my gosh, I didn't know which redhead he was talking about, so I was like, where are you going with this? <laughs> but you know, if you see one of us and say hello, please come and say hello. And you know what? We like Doug hugs too. Yeah. yeah so on the sixteenth, even if you don't have. No, ticket to the Black Girl Hockey Club sort of thing, and you still just have a ticket to the game. Come, Come join us for the tailgate. Bring We're going to be at the East Lot where 328 usually does their uh, tailgate. Some so of them will be there. You don't have to bring anything other than your handsome or beautiful self. And but if you want to, here. you can. If you want to, it is <laughs> uh, encouraged. Maybe bring some beer. I'm kind of jealous. Beer? I could have used my Ooh. dark deep radio voice to kind of like sell that just bring your beautiful smiles people oh my god it'll be NPR voice. It'll, it'll be a few days after valentine's day oh yeah, this, I feel, yeah now, this, now, this reminds me of the uh, sweaty balls commercial. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no 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 we're not wrap, doing saturday night live references oh my gosh <laughs> wrap yourself up in a dougie hug t-shirt and come out and see us on the nice. 16th where are we taking this podcast <laughs> <laughs> Hey, we're attractive people. Hey, I, I would rather have Wham <laughs> on this podcast than the stupid goal horn that the Maple Leafs have. Yeah. And on that note, I think uh, a couple of us have to be on the road. Yeah, we. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, I'm so again, jealous. I want to go. No, oh. and I, I, I want to make sure we're not forgetting anything. Oh, the um, last thing I do want to bring up for those of Ooh. you who are listening, there was news recently. About uh, a certain game that might be uh, outside. Yes. Mm. Is that what you were going to say? Yes. Okay. Yes. So on. <laughs> so the just quick notes. The Carolina Hurricanes did request funding from the Centennial Authority to host a stadium series game for 2021. <laughs> so it sounds like it's all but confirmed that the Carolina Hurricanes will be hosting an outdoor game next season. And then who knows what the opponent's going to be, but it's going to be really wonderful. Oh, wow. Another one. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and maybe I can uh, get some of my uh, hockey uh, connections down here. Oh, yeah. Right. Those. Fun, fun, fun. Hey, yes. Blaze Shades, get down here. Yeah. We live hockey. There's a lot of things coming up, folks. This podcast is getting bigger and growing larger. Mm -hmm. But bear with us because Revolution Rampage is coming to you.